Hello everyone and welcome. If you're like me, you go way too far into fish. You eventually have bought out everything your local fish store has and now you're like, I haven't kept that yet or could I keep that with this? And I think we all start with snails and shrimp. I really like ram's horn snails and pond snails. So like that little pond snail. We always try and keep them alive as long as we can and around the family we always call them grandpa snails. Mystery snails, I like trapdoor snails, Malaysian trumpet snails, Nerei snails, not so much. Nerei snails I always buy when I have an allergy problem. So inherently they're met with like, oh, I need more Nerei snails. And not so much like I pick up a Nerei snail because oh, they're awesome, even though they are pretty awesome. It's kind of like buying a doggy pooper scooper. You're like, oh, I bought one, now I get to scoop up my dog poop out of my yard. Uh, but when it comes to shrimp, there's tons of shrimp. The average home hobbyist can breed some shrimp and make some cheddar. Not a lot. You might only get free fish food. You might only get some free fish every once in a while, but kind of every shrimp on the planet that comes out of a hobbyist aquarium is pretty much worth like a dollar. Now, you might not be able to get a dollar from your store or someone wants to feed their turtle or something. They're only giving you a quarter, whatever it is. But in general, a living little crustacean like that's kind of worth a buck. And same for snails too, honestly. They just don't replicate as easily and as fast and not as many people want them. Snails snailing around with a shrimp riding on it or you get a snail that's got hair algae growing on it and then a shrimp's eating that. Like there are little additions to your aquarium that aren't fish that most people enjoy. And, and I know that because working at a store for so many years, you can see the enjoyment when people buy a snail, they come back in two or three weeks later and they gotta tell you this story about this snail. You wouldn't believe what this thing can do. You wouldn't think it'd be so fast. Like you can tell they honestly were enjoying owning this snail. They're beneficial and they're useful. Maybe not in a hardcore breeding setup, but I do love them quite a bit. And if you haven't kept them as a pet, I encourage you to do that. Like if you're just keeping them as an algae eater or you just had an explosion of snails you never intended to, that is way different than I went shopping, I researched and I found this snail or the shrimp that I do like. But shrimp I feel like they get their own rap of like, oh yeah, there's shrimp keepers, there's shrimp YouTube channels, there's shrimp only stores. What you don't see is like, oh, it's only snails. So I think they're a lot rarer, or they're more common in your aquarium, but the appreciation is a lot rarer. Whereas somehow a shrimp, oh, we need to put that up on a pedestal. Like that thing's worth $5,000. Oh, that snail, yeah, I mean, that one maybe five bucks. So you can get them in cheap, but they're still, I find, to be just as fascinating. Uh, especially when you look into things like assassin snails that kill other snails. The mouth structure on a lot of these snails, it's always super weird to watch them eat against the glass and like nerite snails can eat stuff off the glass that other snails can't. You can see the trails they'll go through where they've been working. I don't know, I find it to be actually enjoyable where I think a lot of people, they're so afraid they're gonna eat their plants that they don't allow themselves the chance to go, wait a second, they are amazing. And so that would be my, my thing to you And number five, like give snails a chance Give shrimp a chance. They could be eaten by other stuff, but don't be afraid of them. You can try with something as easy as, you know, like a feeder shrimp, which would be a ghost shrimp, and slowly go down that rabbit hole. All right, next up on my list, I think are frogs. Now there's more than one type of frog. Everyone kind of thinks one of the two, either African dwarf frog, very popular, or a clawed frog, also very popular. I've had experience with both, even though clawed frogs are illegal in my state. When I first got into the hobby, shrimp at the time weren't very popular. Shrimp outside of ghost shrimp were like never in a pet store. So I didn't have the chance to like fall in love with that. Where these dwarf frogs, they're lovable and they can live underwater and, and, and for sure they don't get out of water, you know? And they, they are that element that I think we're looking for is what else can we do? And then you can graduate on to like, the Sermonesis toads, right? And these are the toads that you see on National Geographic where all the babies like hatch out of their back and it's the grossest thing you've ever seen and you puke while you watch it. But the fact that they're like paper thin, they look cool, they're so weird that I'm drawn to it. Not that I would necessarily keep them with other fish, like you could probably keep them with some 
derpy white clouds and that kind of stuff. But by now, I feel like you might be a connoisseur where you're like, I'm going to Google it before I buy it. And so it might take you not so much towards crayfish, but instead you go, wait a second, I could be doing crabs. And so like a fiddler crab or a vampire crab or a red, um, a red clawed crab, any of those are kind of fun and unique and they can be good algae eaters. All of them have to get up out of water a little bit or at least have a dry spot. As an Aquarius, you go, wait, I could like get a big old piece of driftwood. That'll be fun to find. And then my guy can crawl up out of it and that'll be super cool. I'll put it in the middle of the tank and so I'll get to see him up in the light and go, oh, look, you know, there's the fiddler crab doing his thing. You know, they don't prey on your fish or anything, which is nice. Like a crayfish usually will prey on stuff. But the crabs are a lot more laid back. You do have to get them calcium and you got to make sure they're getting food and not getting out competed and, and all that. But they are wacky and zany and that is fun and everyone should probably enjoy some crabs. The fiddler crab is the nice $4. I'm going to have some fun. I got a fiddler crab it's doing its thing. But very fun. I do like them and surprisingly good algae eaters, which is nice. I've got way more on the list that I actually like and everyone assumes I'll go one way or the other. So I'm trying to find other stuff that's actually fun and not normal. Crayfish, they are pretty normal, but I'm gonna focus on like the dwarf CPOs. And that is the Mexican dwarf crayfish. They're bright orange, they're super cool. They're kind of like, let's, you know, let's take a, a shrimp and a giant crayfish. What if there was like the middle of those two and that's what these things are and they only get about that big. They're not super predatory, they're plant safe, which is nice, but they are relatively easy to breed. And they're kind of like super-sized shrimp, which is cool. I would definitely keep them if I had that chance. Unfortunately, I've never, well, I've had the opportunity, but legally I can't do it. So I don't, even though some stores will bring them in. I think my number one, personally, let me make sure there's nothing above this. I think personally, it has to be turtles because there's so many turtles. You know, so whether it's like a fly river turtle, my holy grail turtle where it looks like a sea turtle, it's got flippers instead of feet, or it's a matamata -mata turtle like Jimmy's got on his channel, which I've been lusting after for many, many years, and they look prehistoric, crazy, ambush predator. You know, they look like a giant kind of leaf and they're meant to just lay there and eat stuff. There's even stuff like I keep right now, which would be uh, the little mini musk turtles that only get about that big and they are living with tons of fish. Uh, you can get things like a red-eared slider. Go rescue one instead of buying one. Go, there's probably 40 of them for Craigslist in your area. Just go rescue someone else's mistake. Like in the thumbnail, Diamondback Terrapin. Uh, very cool looking turtle. So they've got all these cool looks. But in general, turtles are opportunistic. Some are predatory where they'll literally go and hunt. Uh, others are just like, hey, there's a fish that's not moving very fast. I could eat you. Oh, I did, right? They talk about how smelly they are. They'll talk about how much of a bio load they have. They talk about all these things why turtles are bad. If you're a fish keeper, all of that stuff is crazy easy. You're like, yeah, just change the water. Yeah, just use some decent filtration. Yeah, this is real basic here. Those are my, my, my pets I'm gonna talk about. Oxalotls, I've done that before. I've done other things before. I wanna answer questions. I wanna talk about other pets that you guys wanna bring up, like newts. I wish newts were legal here. There's some very cool newts that are pretty fun to play with as well. We hope you enjoyed this video. We actually picked another one that we thought you might like, so click on it right here.